And it's a sad day for everyone, including Speaker Boehner. Just look how dejected he was entering today's press conference. My, oh my, what a wonderful day. There he is going through the two stages of grief, zippity and doodah. Well, the Late Show's had plenty of laughs with John Boehner's resignation, but in all seriousness, there will be a major impact from his decision. Our political analyst is Professor Caroline Heldman from Occidental College. We want to welcome you back to the show. Good to be so here. the Speaker of the House made the surprise announcement yesterday that he is retiring from politics at the end of October. So what do you think inspired the decision? Well, it was preemptive, so they okay. were pushing him out anyway. This okay. was a way for him to save face uh, after uh, an embattled five years as Speaker. He mm -hmm. has really tried to bridge uh, the more conservative Tea Party um, portion, wing of the party, if you will, and the more moderate wing. And he has done so unsuccessfully. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, uh, conservative Republicans put him in a very uncomfortable position where he had to make the choice between shutting down the government mm -hmm. um, and defunding Planned Parenthood or keeping it open. So it was really an impossible decision, maybe a setup, uh, because they do want new leadership. They want new leadership that is uh, more in line with the conservative Tea Party side of things. Okay. And what do you think his retirement will have? What kind of impact do you think it will have on the party moving forward? Well, I think the most immediate impact is that it's less likely that the government will shut down because he no longer has to straddle pleasing the Tea Party members as well as mm -hmm. um, others in Congress. Um, I think moving forward long term, this doesn't help the Republicans. They need to have strong leadership, especially headed into an election year. And I think their options are twofold. Either they put in uh, a more conservative person who will appeal to the Tea Party, who will then disaffect maybe some of the more moderate members, or they'll put in another more moderate member like Boehner, who will face the same circumstance. So uh, I think the Republican Party, uh, the divisions within it right now uh, are, are a threat going into a problem for them going into the election. They need to get their house in order. Okay. And the Pope addressed Congress this week, and it was the first time in history that a Pope has actually addressed the body. Uh, Boehner actually invited him to speak. But what do you think, or how do you think his talk was really received by the folks there? Well, you know, Boehner certainly received it well, right? He mm -hmm. was openly weeping. This is a 20-year uh, dream that he had, and he made it happen. Mm -hmm. um, it felt like a State of the Union address, maybe mm -hmm. a little more respectful, right, because no one's sitting on their hands mm -hmm. or yelling in the middle of it as they have been with our president. But mm -hmm. um, I think if you were a conservative, you heard what you needed to hear, which is his uh, maybe opposition to same-sex marriage, although thinly veiled, mm -hmm. and certainly uh, his support of religious, religious freedom. Mm -hmm. If you were uh, a, are a liberal, you heard it more explicitly, right? He talked about climate change. He talked about immigration. He talked about the death penalty. So the Pope does what he does best, which mm -hmm. is to give something to everyone. Mm -hmm. But what kind of influence do you think the Pope really has on politics here in the U.S.? Well, certainly no direct influence, right? Mm -hmm. He's not lobbying. He goes to Congress, and he's really trying to pull the 70 million Catholic voters in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, into certain positions. He's been very explicit about that with climate change, for example. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, his influence is really with the voters. Um, and he has incredible support from mm -hmm. Catholics and non-Catholics in the U.S., although taking these explicitly political positions has actually caused him to drop significantly in the polls in the past few years. So mm. um, he's paid the price for that uh, political influence, but he's made the Vatican more internationally influential mm -hmm. um, in a way that we haven't seen really since the Pope was involved in ending the Cold War in the 80s. Yeah, wow. All right, Caroline Heldman from Occidental College, thanks so much for joining us this morning.